morning, everybody. It's the wild man here. Uh, last video you're going to see me before I get my hair cut again. I want to start with a couple shout-outs before we jump into our Owl Belly review. Or as I have called it, Owl Belly. Okay. Oscars, Computers and Games, Dark Hurricane, Angela, and Harry Hairball, 23. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel, and I hope you enjoy my content. Okay, so... <clears throat> We are going to start with Owlboy for the Switch. Uh, let's go with a long shot and assume that the PS4 version is identical in probably every way. Uh, Owlboy is a, it, it's a cute little game. Uh, you basically play as a little half owl, half semi-human, an anthropomorphic human owl, or whatever you want to call him, named Otis. And his village uh, gets attacked by uh, pirates. And um, it's basically up to him to uh, make a few allies and uh, fight back. And to prove to everybody he's not just a little screw-up. That's it. Alright, so, on the visual end of this, I want to say, this game, and if you couldn't tell by the gameplay, is a beautiful-looking 2D... Uh, I would classify this game as a platformer uh, slash... Twin, a semi twin stick shooter, and when I get to the gameplay, I'll explain uh, why. The visuals are absolutely breathtaking. Every little piece of the environment, almost everything, is animated. Everything is is vibrant, is colorful, is 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 just such a great attention paid to the detail. Even in the character design, the way the the clothing animates, the flowing, uh, how nice it flows on the characters. The attack animations, the the environments themselves are all very, very wonderfully drawn. Um, I also really like the art direction they took with this game. The game it does have a couple of mi like art in the art direction. It mixes a couple of different feelings. First off, there's the anime inspiration. Second, if anybody remembers a cartoon like David the Gnome or, or something like that from when we were kids, um, the, the world sort of, sort of reminds me of that and, uh, and the, the color palette, the, uh, the, 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 the way they use the color sort of reminds me of David the Gnome. I know it's, it's sort of out there, but if you play the game and you see the gameplay here, you'll understand, uh, or at least if you remember that cartoon, you'll understand what I mean regarding the graphics. I, uh, I enjoyed all the visual uh, angles, all the re all the visual aspects of this game. I think, the, no, this game is a really, really great looking 32-bit style 2D game. Uh, I don't think these graphics would have been able to be pulled off on a Genesis or a Super Nintendo or a Turbo Graphics back in the day. But this is a wonderful, wonderful looking game. There are some nitpicks though, and I do have to pick some nits. It can be difficult at times to discern if something is in the foreground, is on your plane, or is part of the background. Uh, there are a couple of areas where this gets a little, um, it, it can be a little frustrating where you thought it was a part of the background and it's not, and vice versa. Uh, another little, again, a nitpick I have with the, with the visuals is uh, the camera placement. Sometimes I think the camera lets you get too far ahead, and sometimes I think it waits a little bit too long. Again, nothing major. It's nothing that's going to break this game. It's nothing that's going to make you not enjoy it. Um, I also... Actually... Yeah, I, I, I don't like spoiling things, but another uh, part of inspiration, the enemies, especially when you uh, meet the pirates, you can tell through the usage of their skulls and the design of the skulls. There's a little bit of Tron Bond, Mega Man X inspiration in here, uh, especially with the pirates themselves. The visuals, everything in this world is, is just has so much character. It has so much vibrance, and, and, and it's very luminous in its own way. And yes, I'm using luminous to describe uh, very well-animated well, really good looking world. The only other issue I have in the visuals department is that, well, 
There's one area in the game where you have to rely on uh, flame to act as light. The lighting is very good. Don't get me wrong. The way the, the light is animated. However, um, it looked weird on my TV. Playing it in 4K. Uh, I, I don't know if I have it recorded. But um, the lighting, uh, the, the lighting transparency from around Otis and his allies... I don't, there was just something about it that I don't think looked right. But regardless, Owlboy is a great looking game. If you love 2D platformers with this type of visual style, get into it. But now let's go to the sound. The sound, I'm going to say, is probably the weakest part of the game. And, and in this case, it's not a bad thing. And it's just, this game has some really good tracks. The sound effects are good, so the weapons have oomph. The enemies all have their own, make their own uh, little noises, and um, the, the environments, the, the sounds of waterfalls, the sound of the grass blowing. It, it's a very the sound design is very well done. However, in the music department, I don't think there's anything here that like I, there's nothing memorable here. Not that any of the tunes are bad. It's just there's no standout piece. And I just, I, I couldn't even hum a, a, a tune off of my head if I want to. There is, the characters are not voiced. All the, uh, all the um, character expression is, is done through dialogue box and through the way the characters are animated and their own unique styles. I don't want to give away anything when I get to the gameplay about your allies, but, um, well, we're going to get there in a minute. Another thing. Hearing Otis's, uh, um, just Otis has a move where he spins and does like a sound like a melee attack with his, uh, with his cape. I don't know why it makes like a wishing sound effect. Like it goes, whoosh, whoosh. I, I, I think it should make more like a, like, like picture taking a cape or a cloak and flipping it over your shoulder. Anyway, nitpicking. I think the soundtrack could have had. Better, they could have had better pieces, at least more memorable. The, it's not that it's not a good soundtrack. There's just nothing that's going to stick with you. And that's what I look for. When I'm playing a game, especially with the soundtrack, I like, to, I like to, to hear the songs in my head when I'm not playing the game. Maybe when I'm at work, I like to hear it. That, to me, shows that it's a good soundtrack. When you can remember it and when you're humming it in your head or when you're hearing it and you're not playing the game. Now... Getting to the gameplay of Owlboy. Okay, the controls. First off, I want to say the controls are just fine. This is the only game I have I've played that I just cannot, at least on the Switch, I cannot remember the controls. You have a jump button. You have a grab button. You use the twin sticks because your allies, uh, you'll pick them up, you'll hold them, and you'll use their weapons, and it, you shoot with twin sticks. There's very little hand-to-hand -hand melee combat. It's, it's, it's twin stick based. There is a little platforming. The controls, I think, I just can't remember them for some reason. On the Switch, A, B, X, Y. The Y button is your, uh, your cloak attack. The B button is jump. No, A is jump, B is uh, ZL is grab. R is uh, the ZR or the R button, the ZR, the, the big trigger is uh, to fire. I think the control setup, it, it, it's just, uh, there's just something the way they set it up where it just doesn't stick. It doesn't resonate with me. The game is easy to pick up and control. Your character can fly unlimited. for uh, He doesn't just fly for a few seconds and then fall. The platforming, there's not as much on the platforming. However... The biggest problem with this game, because you're in the sky and there you go in multiple directions, it's different areas. It is a semi-open world experience, uh, a 2D open world. The game needs a map. And if you don't pay attention to any dialogue, to any story bits that happen, you're probably going to be lost and not know where to go. However... That's not a bad thing because a lot, a big part of this game is exploration, trying to find the coins, uh, the currency which is used to buy some extra items. The shopkeeper is a riot in this. Um, you will, there's no real upgrading or anything. It's there's a couple of items. The game tracks if you found all the coins in every area. You 
switch your allies. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna give away how many there are, but you switch your allies with the R and the L button, each of them having a different weapon, different attack. The life, uh, your, um, they, they, they can't die. You could drop them from wherever, and all you do is just hit L or R and switch them. You'll use Otis to pick up, to pull uh, vegetables and uh, things out of the ground, including treasure, which actually, the resistance that the game gives, it shows Otis is putting strength into ripping these things out of the ground. You'll harvest uh, vegetables out of trees, out of the ground to, for, to, for life. You can throw um, pretty much anything you can pick up, you can throw. I don't really like to call this game a platformer because there's really minimal platforming. But because, especially because you can fly. However, you will be navigating through some uh, some rough bramble and vines. You'll be navigating through tons of enemies, tons of fire. You will level up uh, to a degree. You'll uh, expand your health bar. You'll find allies along the way, all of whom have their own very distinctive personalities. Otis is the only character who doesn't talk. I'm almost certain uh, he doesn't actually speak any dialogue. Because it's really supposed to be like you. You're playing as him, so it's you. Um, again, the controls and the gameplay. The gameplay is just fine. It's largely twin stick based. You'll be shooting in 360 degrees. You'll be using melee combat if you so desire to a minimal. There is some puzzle solving. And that's another thing, I think. This game... <coughs> pardon me. This game definitely could have used... A little more, uh, some more puzzles. The game focuses more, uh, more so on the exploration and the combat. And the puzzles, it's really find this, drop on switch, grab that, use it to get through this, make your progress. Um, so basically, Otis, uh, he can fly as long as he likes, he can stay in the air. And that's the confusing thing also. When you jump, you hit the jump button again and then Otis starts flapping his wings. But certain things you do could cause you to just drop out of the air. By hitting jump again, you'll fall. You can roll by hitting the B button in any at any time. And that's what gets me confused between the B and the, and the jump button. I, I don't know why I keep hitting one thinking it does the other. And I'm normally very good with controls in games. I just think this game, uh, if the game would allow you to change the control setup, which I haven't even looked that's a shame on me. I should have. Um, I would have really made like uh, the roll button, maybe like the R, and remap and just used uh, the L button or the R button, however, to cycle my uh, my allies. Which, again, if any of you played Owlboy, I'm sure you'll agree with me that the controls, not that they're bad, not that they're difficult, it just doesn't stick with what button does what at times. And I don't know why. Is it a fun game? Yes, Owlboy is a fun game. It's a wonderfully crafted world with wonderfully made, with wonderfully designed characters, with a good soundtrack. Not great, nothing. Again, memorability, memory, memory, memory. When a sound, when you, when you're humming a tune in your head from a game, that's a memorable soundtrack. When you can't recall three notes of a song from a game, that's a non-memorable soundtrack. A lot of people think when a game is not soundtrack is not memorable that it sucks. No, the songs are well composed. They are some nice sound. They are good, nice sounding. They fit the environment. They fit the theme. Um, it, it's just nothing hits and lasts with me. That's all. Alloy is a fun game. It's a very, very nice looking game. A very well drawn 2D adventure. I just wish that there was a map. I wish it had a little stronger of a soundtrack. I wish the controls were just a little, a little more tightened up to a degree. I, I again, I, I really can't phrase this, but it's a fun game. It's worth checking out. I'm right at the end. I, uh, I, I do th hope that maybe one day we will get another Owl Boy. I haven't finished the game, so I don't know if the world gets destroyed. I have no clue. But. Otis and his cast of friends and uh, the NPCs you'll come across in this game, a lot of them will put a smile on your face. It, it is a very charming game. Replayability, it doesn't seem like there's going to be too much replay value with the exception of maybe uh, getting all the coins. 
and um, just buying all the items and things offered, which it looks like there's only like seven or eight, not too much, maybe even less. Otherwise, you know what? Owlboy is a pleasant little surprise. If you're into retro styled 2D action platformers with a twin stick uh, kicker on it, give Owlboy, give Otis and his friends a try. It's available on PS4, it's available on the Switch, and I, I'm not sure about Xbox. Haven't seen on the, haven't looked really on the Game Pass or the Marketplace on there or whatever. But again, I'm pretty sure it's the same across all versions. Anyway, I'm John. This is Elite Gamers United. I'm sorry this review took so long. I, I've got a lot of things going on, and by the time I get home from work during the week, I'm exhausted. Anyway, next game review, we are jumping to the Nintendo 64. And uh, actually, I'm going to keep this one a surprise because it's a game I've wanted to talk about for a while. Anyway, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you on my next video.